To everything there is a season, a time and a purpose under heaven. My name is Cantor Kurt Schmidt, and it is my privilege to welcome you tonight to the final prayer at the end of the day service for this season. For over a year, we have gathered on Wednesday nights to pray together, to give our day and our week over to God, and to ask for peaceful rest. And what we need now is a collective breath a break from this rhythm. So while tonight is our final prayer at the end of the day for a season, it will be back. We will return to this moment of prayer. Not sure when, not sure how, but God will let us know. Here we are tonight, and I'm so grateful that you're here with me. Whether you're watching in real time here Wednesday night at 8 o'clock or you're watching later on in the week either way it would make my heart sore if you would let me know that you're here in the comments give us a greeting let us know that you're here praying with me with all of us gathered together if you'd like to follow a bulletin for this prayer service it is available on our website which is zion-lutheran.org if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the home page, you'll see a link for worship bulletins and their prayer at the end of the day for May 26th, 2021. With all of that being said, let us begin as we always do with deep breathing, breathing in the love and the grace and the compassion of God and breathing out the anxiety and the worry, the stress that the world wants us to carry. Let's set that down and take in God's divine breath. And breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Continue with the dialogue. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Our night hymn, Christ Mighty Savior. This week we will sing all five verses. Praise. 
Christ for aching bodies, soothing the weary. Though bodies slumber, heart shall keep their vigil forever resting in the peace of Jesus in light or darkness worshiping our Savior no and forever Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ, and rise in the morning to serve. I thought long and hard about what scripture I wanted to leave with all of us for these summer months until we are together again in this space. And I go back to what is probably my favorite of Paul's letters, which is the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, beginning with verse 4. Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. I really do think those words speak for themselves but as we continue our trek through 2021 as we emerge from a pandemic and embrace a new normal as we figure out what to keep, what to discard, and what to adapt in our lives personally, professionally, in our church lives. This is the checklist. This is what we are to be concerned about. Things that are just and honorable and commendable and excellent, things that are worthy of praise and to keep on doing what we have been doing. Just because we don't meet here on Wednesdays does it not mean that you cannot make daily prayer a part of your routine and your ritual. And now more than ever, I would encourage you to do that. And I would ask that you hold me accountable to do the same. That we can pray where we are. There's a wonderful contemporary song about that. Pray where you are, in the car, at the store, 
at your desk, pray where you are. God is here and, and God is ready to listen. God is with us and is ready to receive what it is we need to put in God's hands. And yet, even as we separate from this holy time, I'm reminded that we're all in this together. And so the song that I wanted to leave you with tonight is a favorite in the Zion community. Uh, and it's one that uh, will become, if it has not already, will become a battle cry for us as we reclaim mission and ministry in our congregation. But I'm reminded of the early church where people commented about the Christians, the followers of Jesus, and said, see how they love one another. That's what set them apart, not the crosses they wear around their necks, not the good deeds that they did, although that's a part of love, but see how they love one another. So how will people know that we are followers of Jesus? They'll know by our love. And so we sing, they'll know we are Christians by our love. you to enter even more deeply into our prayer, to find a comfortable position for prayer, whether that is seated or standing or kneeling, eyes open or closed, hands outstretched or folded, as is your custom, as I share with you the Canticle for Compline. 
Guide us, waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Guide us, waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Eternal God, the hours of both day and night are yours, and to you the darkness is no threat. Be present, we pray, with those who labor in these hours of night, especially those who watch and work on behalf of others. Grant them diligence in their watching, faithfulness in their service, courage in danger and competence in emergencies. Help them to meet the needs of others with confidence and compassion. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. The day is now past, and we commit it to you. We entrust to you the night. We rest securely, for you are our help, and you neither slumber nor sleep. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forevermore. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of that peace here in the comments, to make a phone call, to send a text message, to wish peace upon those whom you love, and even more challengingly so, peace with someone who is difficult to love, who you may not like right now, but who God is calling you to love. Thank you again for sharing with me in this holy time, not just this week, but for the past 54 weeks together. A couple of announcements that are pertinent to our Zion community a very lengthy Wednesday news went out today with lots of things going on. And uh, the best thing I can say is mark your calendars and be ready for more. 
we have an annual meeting coming up on Sunday, June 27th. Uh, and that's an opportunity not just to approve the budget or to vote in council members, but to really celebrate what we've accomplished together in mission and ministry over the last year. And I would encourage you, if you are a Zion member, uh, to be a part of that meeting, whether in person or on Zoom. Uh, it really is meant to be a celebration and, and an intentional look at where God is leading us. So that's Sunday, June 27th. Uh, tonight, my heart is so full, we celebrated a virtual visit with one of the authors of 12 Tiny Things, and uh, Ellie and her time with us was such a blessing and uh, such a wonderful way to cap uh, this study. I invite you to stay tuned. Uh, Pastor Potter, beginning at the end of the summer, will uh, enter into a study of Acts with us, uh, part Bible study, part discussion. So stay tuned for that towards the end of the summer. Uh, if you would like to volunteer to, um, I should say volunteer at Juneteenth, uh, that's a city event that's coming up um, on Sunday or on Saturday, June 19th, uh, celebrating, of course, within the African American community, but all are welcome. Zion will be there. We'll be there with our tent and our banner and our prayer wall, inviting people to participate in that with us and letting the community know that we're here uh, and that we care about renewing Deerfield Beach. And uh, would invite you to be a part of that, whether you volunteer at the booth or uh, just come and show support. Uh, there'll be a lot of other activities going on. So I would direct you to our website, also to the City of Deerfield website for more information. Uh, Pastor Potter continues to take some time away through the end of this week. If there are any pastoral emergencies, please call me and I will call Pastor Bob Schaefer at St. Stephen's of Pompano, who has agreed to provide pastoral care for us uh, during this time away. Also, uh, we're entering into a summer of song, even though we're taking a break from uh, our Wednesday prayer, the song is not going away. We're doing a bracket style tournament of some favorite, favorite hymns from within our congregation. Uh, direct your attention to our newsletter and to Facebook and the website once it all gets up there to vote each week on favorite hymns and to sing them and to find great joy in these songs and these texts, these melodies that we share and we love together. Uh, and then when we get to August, we'll talk about our own individual favorite hymns and have a chance to share those as well. So many opportunities to continue the song. And uh, with all of that said, I just want to say again how grateful I am that uh, you all are a part of this time with me, that we've been able to carve out these few minutes each Wednesday evening. It has been a real blessing. It will be a blessing to take a Sabbath from this and to come back strengthened uh, for whatever form this particular ministry will take. Uh, you'll still see me on Sunday mornings. We'll still be doing mission and ministry together. Uh, but I pray that your weeks continue to be blessed, that you continue to pursue peace in your lives, in your work, in your hearts, and in your homes. Wish you a peaceful night tonight, a peaceful end to the rest of your week. Lots of love, lots of grace. Uh, and that God would be with you every step of the way. Have a wonderful night. Take good care of each other and make each day worthy of glorifying God. Good night, everyone.